Hello, and thank you for providing me with the opportunity to share information with you about Healthy Aging NC, a resource center for North Carolina evidence-based program. My name is Nicole Miller, and I'm the Director of State and Community Collaboration in the North Carolina Center for Health and Wellness at UNC Asheville. I'm pleased to work with a wonderful group of colleagues on several initiatives within the center. I'll speak in more detail about each of these programs that we offer within Healthy Aging NC, but first I'd like to spend a few moments sharing information about the North Carolina Center for Health and Wellness at UNC Asheville. The North Carolina Center for Health and Wellness is a public-facing entity of UNC Asheville. We develop equitable opportunities that lead to healthy North Carolina communities. We do this by impacting policy building, capacity, and igniting community initiatives by working through a web of cross-sector relationships organized around building healthier places throughout the state. Two of our most prominent initiatives include the North Carolina Healthy Aging NC Resource Center and our Culture of Results work. I will speak more about the Healthy Aging NC initiative for most of the presentation, but I'd first like to share a little bit about our Culture of Results work. North Carolina Center for Health and Wellness Culture of Results is a training and technical assistance program that supports statewide initiatives as well as local public health departments, hospitals, clinics, and universities, um, and other community-based organizations to measure the impact of our work and improve our results. My colleague, Emma Olson, who's pictured here, leads that initiative within the North Carolina Center for Health and Wellness. She teaches our team and internal and external partners to use a framework that's called results-based accountability and the common sense tools that plan and evaluate projects and services. Results-based accountability has been re recognized by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the National Institutes of Health, and other governmental agencies as an effective practice for evaluation and planning. In an example of our cultural results work, we support the Western North Carolina Health Network in their effort to have local health departments and hospital systems collaborate on community health assessments and community health improvement processes. I'd like to spend the remainder of the time that we have over the next hour sharing information with you about North Carolina's Healthy Aging NC Resource Center. This initiative was established at the North Carolina Center for Health and Wellness in 2016 and has grown tremendously over the past year and a half. In addition to the public facing website that serves as an entry portal for information, resources, and referrals, we also have a full time data administrator, a project manager, and an administrative assistant to provide support for bringing programs to scale to help support program providers, to expand more opportunities for our programs, and to ensure programs are offered with fidelity. Here on the slide, you can see the images of our staff. Again, I'm Nicole Miller, the Director of State and Community Collaboration. Jeannie Dairagi leads our chronic disease self-management pro programs and projects. Janice Self is our data administrator for all of our Healthy Aging NC programs. And Katie McDonald offers administrative support. Emma Olson, who was pictured on the slide previous to this one, supports our evaluation efforts for the Healthy Aging NC initiative as well. The Healthy Aging NC Resource Center is not an effort that has been done in isolation. Here on the slide, you'll see the history of how Healthy Aging NC came to be. In 2014, North Carolina, through the North Carolina Division of Aging and Adult Services, an entity within the Department of Health and Human Services, received a false prevention grant for a two-year project to expand evidence-based false prevention programs and create the Healthy Aging NC Resource Center at the North Carolina Center for Health and Wellness at UNC Asheville. This grant, which was set to expire in August 2016, was extended through August 31st, 2017. Our partners at North Carolina Division of Aging and Adult Services have been instrumental in helping to support the Healthy Aging Resource Center as it was established in January 2016. 
We also received some support through the North Carolina Division of Public Health, which is a sister agency to the Division of Aging and Adult Services. Both agencies operate in the Department of Health and Human Services within North Carolina. In 2015, so one year after receiving the False Prevention Grant, the North Carolina Center for Health and Wellness at UNC Asheville applied to receive the Chronic Disease Self-Management Education Programs Grant. That award was also a two-year award that ended August 31st, 2017. We have applied to extend that grant through August 31st, 2018, and expect that to be the case. In that award, we propose the expansion of the Chronic Disease Self-Management Education Suite of Evidence-Based Programs. In North Carolina, we call those programs Living Healthy. Throughout the presentation, you'll hear me use the terms Chronic Disease Self-Management Education or Living Healthy, and sometimes I will use one and other times I will use other depending on the context. Nationally, these programs are known as Chronic Disease Self-Management Education Programs, but again, in North Carolina, we refer to them as the Living Healthy Program. The suite of, program include, suite of programs includes the Chronic Disease Self-Management Program, the Diabetes Self-Management Program, the Chronic Pain Self-Management Program, and we have two programs that are the Chronic Disease Self-Management Program in Spanish and the Diabetes Self-Management Program in Spanish. These are the Tomando Control de Su Salud Spanish CDSME Program, and the Programa de Manejo Personal de la Diabetes, which is the Spanish DSMP program. In this Chronic Disease Self-Management Education Programs grant, we also have a centralized training academy housed at uh, Centralina Area Agency on Aging, and we've also added some training enhancements for disability and minority health populations. As I mentioned previously, Jeannie Dairagi is the main project coordinator for this grant at the North Carolina Center for Health and Wellness. I'll speak a little bit more about our fall prevention grant towards the end of our presentation as we have received an award to extend that 2014 grant um, into new work with an accountable care organization in Western North Carolina. In this slide, I'd like to share a little bit about what we are trying to do in establishing the North Carolina um, Healthy Aging Resource Center. And overall, the, the aim of this initiative is to create a well-informed community where people can access high-quality, evidence-based, healthy aging programs where they live, work, play, and pray. The ways that we try to do this is to ensure that we know where classes are held and that we can ensure our partners and organizations and individuals who are looking for the programs also know where the work classes are held. We attempt to help local providers, regional providers scale programs where people want and need classes. We work to ensure classes are offered with fidelity, and this includes creating a well-informed community of provider agencies with webinars, with technical assistance and information and resources. Sometimes those resources are financial and other times these resources are um, class paperwork, they could be fact sheets, they could be fidelity monitoring tools um, and other things like that. We also work to secure long-term funding to support classes. We are currently a member of the National Council on Aging Network Development Learning Collaborative, where we're working on developing a business plan, thinking about how these programs may be part of Medicaid managed care in North Carolina. Uh, there are efforts nationally to have Medicare support these programs at the local or regional level. We also foster collaboration at local, regional, and statewide levels. The programs that we are currently supporting are those that we have grant funds to support. These are false prevention programs, and in a few slides I will speak more about the different false prevention programs that we offer, and also the chronic disease self-management suite of programs that was listed on the previous slide. 
we have many programs that are evidence-based across North Carolina, and we would love to be able to support all of the programs, but unfortunately funding does not allow for that at this time. Some of the reasons that we have started this initiative here at the Healthy Aging and Store Center is that our providers across the state have been offering these programs for many years. With changes in funding, sometimes the capacity to offer programs changes as well. And we constantly see new providers or new coordinators of programs, new administrators of programs, reinventing the wheel unnecessarily. We also have had opportunities to expand these programs through grant funding, and we've seen other states have great success in developing what's called this network hub model, where there is a statewide resource center or regional resource center to support the program expansion and embedding the programs into sustainable delivery systems. We know that health reform is moving towards value-based care, and these programs offer significant return on investment, as will be detailed later in this presentation. Other reasons this type of work makes sense is that in 2018, so not too long from now, North Carolina will have more people who are over the age of 60 than between the ages of 0 and 17, so more older adults than youth. And you'll see on this slide here that we also see an increase over the next 20 years of the population of older adults age 85 and older. As North Carolina ages, we must understand the health needs of this demographic. As you can see in this slide here, there are several characteristics of older adults that are important to note, including the percentage of the population who lives alone, the number of, or I'm sorry, the percentage of the population who have a disability. In a few slides, you'll also see the number of individuals who are living at home. Here on this slide, you can see the high percentage who own their own home. We also have to consider the health care costs and the health conditions that our older adults will face. In North Carolina, the risk of falls is quite a burden. In a report that was developed by the North Carolina Division of Public Health in 2016, we learned that each week there are over a thousand emergency department visits among older adults age 65 and older, 266 hospitalizations, and 17 deaths due to falls injuries. Residents age 65 and older account for 88% of all falls deaths and 73% of non-fatal falls hospitalizations in North Carolina. The projected rise of deaths due to fall injuries, increased ER utilization, and hospitalizations will likely result in diminished quality of life for North Carolina older adults. If you've ever talked to many people who know older adults or who have older adults that they've cared for, you'll know and have heard that many people experience a dramatic diminished quality of life resulting from a fall or as they age and as falls risk become greater. Lifetime costs associated with unintentional fall injuries in 2014 among North Carolina residents age 65 and older are estimated to be almost 1.4 billion. We also must think about chronic diseases among older adults. According to the Behavioral Risk Factor Surveillance System, in 2015, older adults aged 85, I'm sorry, 65 and older, 83% had at least one chronic disease, and 52% have two or more chronic conditions. Most older adults age 65 and older live in the community. You'll see the statistics here, 90, almost 94% of older adults live in the community as opposed to nursing homes or assisted living. And it is likely no surprise for all of you that work in hospital settings or in um, case management, maybe in primary care offices, that falls, chronic disease, care transitions, they're all interrelated. Hospital readmissions, coordination among primary care physicians, specialists in the hospital, 
medications can be related to both falls and chronic conditions. The capacity and knowledge of caregivers varies. The capacity and self-efficacy of older adults also varies. I'll speak about the programs in just a few more minutes, but I want to spend a little bit of time sharing information about our partners. At the national level, we see some of our partners who provide guidance and support as the National Council on Aging. They provide technical assistance to many of the organizations that are offering evidence-based healthy aging programs across the country. They've also received funding through the Administration for Community Living to serve as the technical assistance organization for grantees who received the Chronic Disease Self-Management Education Programs Grant and agencies who received the False Prevention Grant. The next bullet here is the ACL, is the Administration for Community Living. They are the federal funder that supports most of our initiatives at this time. They provide the federal grants for the Chronic Disease Self-Management Program, for the um, False Prevention Programs. They also administer, administer the funding for Older Americans Act Title III D funds, which many area agencies on aging use across the state and across the country to offer evidence-based health promotion programs. We've also recently aligned ourselves with the Osteoarthritis Action Alliance to expand the Walk With Ease program. This national organization is housed at UNC Chapel Hill and has provided a great deal of technical assistance and support for the expansion of the Walk With Ease program. State partners that support our collaboration and dissemination include the North Carolina Division of Aging and Adult Services. As I mentioned before, the creation of Healthy Aging NC was a result of a strong relationship and collaboration between the North Carolina Center for Health and Wellness at UNC Asheville and North Carolina Division of Aging and Adult Services. We also have a very strong relationship with the Division of North Carolina Division of Public Health and the North Carolina Division of Public Health Injury and Violence Prevention Branch supports some of our falls prevention activities. We also have a strong relationship with the North Carolina Alliance of YMCAs. As we look to develop a network of program providers, the YMCAs are a strong partner providing evidence-based programs at local and regional levels. We have a relationship with the North Carolina Baptist Aging Ministries, NCBAM, which offers a hotline and support for many of the evidence-based programs at local and regional levels as well. And a recent development that we've had with the North Carolina Council of Churches includes a new strong partnership as well. The regional and local agencies that we see as part of our network include some of the organizations that you see here on the list. In North Carolina, there are 16 area agencies on aging. These are regional agencies that reach older adults through various types of programming. As I previously said, many use Older Americans Act funding for evidence-based health promotion programs. In many cases, these agencies are the administrators for these programs at the regional and local level. We also connect with Centers for Independent Living, who have been working to offer the chronic disease self-management programs and a matter of balance program, which is a false prevention program, to older adults and adults with disabilities. We have several YMCAs that are re also regional, which offer some Tai Chi programs, many offer diabetes self-management programs, and other evidence-based programs as well. We've seen the uptake of some of these classes among hospitals and Community Care of North Carolina networks. Local health departments have also been offering some of these programs for sometimes just a year and other times for several years. At the local level, senior centers are also offering these programs. In other states, we've seen some great success where universities train students to be leaders in these programs creating a well-informed future workforce for these programs. We've also seen some of those successes here in North Carolina as well. In our Chronic Disease Self-Management Education Programs grant, 
we've been working with federally qualified health centers to bring chronic disease self-management programs, diabetes self-management programs, chronic pain self-management programs to the population served by federally qualified health centers. Part of that process has also been to look at the patient outcomes and return on investment that these programs bring to that specific population. Now I'd like to spend a little bit of time talking about the evidence-based programs themselves. Most of this information may be a review for many of you, but for those of you that have never heard about an evidence-based program, they offer proven ways to promote health and prevent disease among older adults. They're based on research and they provide documented health benefits. Older adults who participate in evidence-based programs can lower their risk of chronic diseases and falls or improve long-term effects of chronic disease or falls. Many evidence-based programs allow for more efficient use of available community and healthcare resources as they use trained lay leaders and or coaches to teach the classes. One way to summarize evidence-based programs is that an evidence-based program is offered in the same way regardless of the location or the trainer teaching that class. Within our falls prevention programs, we support several that fall along a continuum of care. A Matter of Balance is one of the programs that we offer, but the Otago Exercise Program is another. The Tai Chi for Arthritis Program is another program, and the YMCA Moving for Better Balance Program is also another program. The tai Excuse me, I'm sorry. The Tai Chi for Arthritis and the YMCA Moving for Better Balance program are both different versions of Tai Chi. On the next slide, I'll talk a little bit more about these programs in detail. Here you can see those community-based falls prevention programs that I just mentioned. The Otago Exercise Program is best suited for individuals who have sustained falls in the past and may be considered frail. These individuals may have difficulty with gait, balance, or leg strength. They must be willing and able to work with a physical therapist. And in most cases, this program benefits people who are limited in activities because of their concerns about falling. This Otago exercise program must be delivered by a physical therapist and is done over the course of 52 weeks. While we have some program providers who offer the Otago exercise program, we connect for mostly with the Carolina Geriatric Education Center, which is located at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, and they provide most of the support for the physical therapists offering those programs. The A Matter of Balance program is what we would consider our signature program, which is offered widely across North Carolina in multiple settings, and we have many different types of providers who offer A Matter of Balance. This program is best suited for individuals who walk independently with or without a cane or walker and are able to participate in a group discussion. The A Matter of Balance program has eight sessions and the first three sessions primarily focus on the group discussion. And in session three is when most of the participants will start to do some very gentle exercises. Individuals who have a desire to learn how to reduce their risk of falling and have a desire to improve their balance, flexibility, and strength are those who would best be best suited for the A Matter of Balance program. The eight sessions can be delivered once a week for eight weeks or twice a week for four weeks. Each session lasts two hours. The Tai Chi for Arthritis program, as you can see on this slide, is best suited for individuals who want to decrease pain from arthritis, rheumatoid diseases, or related musculoskeletal conditions. It's also beneficial for those who are looking to improve movement, balance, strength, flexibility, and or relaxation. And it could be appropriate and beneficial for those who have mild, moderate, or severe joint involvement in back pain. This Tai Chi for Arthritis program requires a minimum of 16 hours of in-person class time to achieve the falls prevention benefit. I'll speak a little bit more about the return on investment for these programs, but these programs all have quite a bit of research documenting that they do decrease the risk of falls. And again, this program, the Tai Chi for Arthritis program, requires those 16 hours to achieve those falls prevention benefits. 
The YMCA Moving for a Better Balance program is another Tai Chi program that is primarily offered or is offered in the YMCA setting. This program is best suited for individuals who want to decrease pain from arthritis, rheumatoid diseases, or related musculoskeletal conditions. It's appropriate for those who are looking to improve movement, balance, strength, flexibility, and relaxation. It's appropriate for those who have mild, moderate, or severe joint involvement and back pain. In the YMCAs, this is a 12-week program that consists of core eight form routines and subroutine of eight integrated therapeutic movements. For this program, a minimum of 50 hours is required to show the benefits of false prevention. In our chronic disease self-management suite of programs, there are several programs that all follow a very similar format. These include the Chronic Disease Self-Management Program, the Diabetes Self-Management Program, the Chronic Pain Self-Management Program, Tomando Control de Su Salud, which is the Spanish Chronic Disease Self-Management Program, and Programa de Manejo Personal de la Diabetes, which is the Spanish Diabetes Program. Another chronic disease self-management program that we are now offering through Healthy Aging and Z includes the Walk With Ease program. And just to clarify, when I say that we are offering these programs, we are offering them through the network of providers. In most cases, we don't actually offer the classes on the university campus, but we try to link people to the classes where they exist. And similar to our false prevention programs, we have a fact sheet that also provides an outline of the different chronic disease self-management programs. Again, these are called Living Healthy in North Carolina. For the Living Healthy, the chronic disease self-management program, these are appropriate for individuals who face any type of chronic condition, who are interested in the tools to cope with symptoms, and it's appropriate for those who can make weekly action plan um, those who can share experiences, and those who can help others solve problems they encounter. There are some tools in the, the trainer manual for dealing with individuals who may have Alzheimer's or some types of dementia. Those individuals can take these classes, um, but for the most part, individuals who can make action plans and can participate in a group discussion are, most, are those who can benefit the most from these classes. The Living Healthy Chronic Disease Self-Management Program is a small group workshop. It's led by two trained facilitators, and the program meets one time a week for two and a half hours each week over the period of six weeks. So it's a six-week session, a six-week program of two and a half hours each, each session. The Living Healthy Diabetes Self-Management Program is very similar to the Chronic Disease Self-Management Program, but it has a stronger focus for individuals who have type 2 diabetes or have been told they have pre-diabetes. Similar to the Chronic Disease Self-Management Program, individuals must be able to make action plans, share experiences, help others solve problems, um, and it's beneficial for those who are interested in the tools to deal with the symptoms of diabetes. You'll notice that all of these, the, all of the Living Healthy Chronic Disease suite of programs meet for six weeks for two and a half hours each week and are led by two trained facilitators. In a similar way, the Chronic Pain Self-Management Program is similar to the other two, and it's for individuals who are experiencing chronic pain and helps individuals deal with, find the tools and cope with frustration, fatigue, poor sleep, and isolation. The Walk With Ease program is a program that we recently brought on at the Healthy Aging NC Resource Center. This is a program for individuals who have arthritis, who are interested in reducing pain, increasing balance and strength, and increasing physical activity. Beneficial for those who are able to attend the educational sessions combined with stretching and with walking time. This program meets three times a week for six weeks, and each session consists of a health education piece, stretching activities, and a 10 to 35 minute walk. There is a self-directed version of this program that is available online.
And as a reminder, the Healthy Aging NC Resource Center works to ensure that these evidence-based programs are embedded into an integrated, sustainable statewide delivery system. We recognize that the quality of life for older adults, adults with disabilities, and low-income minority adults is dramatically improved by taking these programs. We've seen results nationally and results in North Carolina that have showed better outcomes as a result of people going through these classes. In addition, we see results that, that we, these programs meet the triple aims of better health, better health care, and lower health care costs. In a 2013 chronic disease self-management education program study, the return on investment was documented to show the better health, the better care, and the lower cost. In particular, a $714 per person savings was noticed in emergency room visits and hospital utilization. After considering program costs, that was a $364 per person net savings. This slide again shows a national potential cost savings of $6.6 .6 billion by reaching 10% of Americans with one or more chronic conditions. In North Carolina, we can offer this program through our network of providers for a much lower program cost, which results in a higher per person net savings. Return on investment report was also conducted for several evidence-based programs in 2013 in a Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services report to Congress. In particular, that study showed that the Amato Balance Program also met the Institute of Healthcare Improvement's triple aims of better health, better care, and lower costs. In that study, the results show there was a $938 decrease in total medical cost savings per year. $517 of that was a reduction in unplanned hospitalization costs. $234 of that was a reduction in skilled nursing facility costs. And $881 resulted in a re came from a reduction in home health care costs. In 2015, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention released a special report looking at the return on investment of the Otago and the Tai Chi Moving for Better Balance program. The Otago Exercise Program had an average cost per participant of three, almost $340 and an average expected benefit of $768 for participants over the age of 60, which was an, a return on investment of 127% for each dollar invested. The Tai Chi Moving for Better Balance program had an average cost per participant of $104, an average expected benefit of $630, almost $634, and a return on investment of 509% for each dollar invested. I probably don't need to spend too much time talking about the return on investment of these programs. I know many of you are very interested in how you connect your patients or your loved ones maybe those who you care for, to these programs. What I'd like to spend the remainder of our time doing is navigating the Healthy Aging NC Resource Center website so you can find what you might be looking for. Here in this slide, you see a snapshot of some of the pages from the Healthy Aging NC Resource Center. I'll click on the link in just a moment so we can go to the page itself, but I'd like to point out that on the primary menu, you'll be able to see all of the different programs that we offer on the main page. And clicking on any one of these programs will lead you through a series of information about the program itself and an opportunity to find out if programs are offered in your community. When you click on the map for the programs, as you see on the bottom left of the slide, here I clicked on a matter of balance, and I found some information about the Matter Balance program. I then clicked on the link to find out if there are programs available in my community and came up with the map of North Carolina. If you click on any one of these pins, there would be information about the program itself. I will now leave the presentation and bring you to the website so you can see how you'd be able to find this information. So here I'm at healthyagingnc.com, and if I scroll down, 
I can see all the programs that were listed on that previous slide. Similar to how I went through it to show you on that slide, I will click on a matter of balance where I can see a description about the program itself, a description of who should attend the program, the components of the program, and then a button at the bottom to register for this workshop. As of today, you can see some of the programs that are being advertised, for lack of a better term, on our website. The information on this website is only as good as the providers that share this information with us. As you can see from this list, we have quite a few programs that are being offered across the state, but we would really like to see these programs as available as prescription medications, which means there would be pins in every community across the state. If you click on a location that might be closest to your area, so in this case, I will click on Lexington Senior Center here in the central part of the state, you'll see a description of where this program is being offered and the dates from the program. I can click on the Lexington a Matter of Balance program and get more information about when the class is offered, the location, the description that has been shared with us, and how a person can register for the class. As you can see on this particular class, this class offers online registration. If you'd like to register a person or would like to register yourself for the class, you can go ahead and complete this information and it will be shared with the program administrator. You could simply back out of this page if you want to find another program in your area, or you could navigate to the top bar and click on either the Healthy Aging NC logo here or click on Programs if you're interested in going to find the details of other programs that might be available in your area. In addition to finding programs in your area through Healthy Aging NC, you can also find other types of information on our website. You can learn about upcoming lay leader or coach training. You can download Healthy Aging resources for your office or for your clients or patients. You can direct clients to accessible and healthy aging resources and evidence-based programs. And you can stay up to date on the latest healthy aging news and information. Here on this slide, you can see that we have a falls prevention toolkit for patients and families and a chronic disease self-management education toolkit for including participants with disabilities. I'll show you how you can find some of these resources on our website. On our resources page, if you'd like information, there's some resources on our chronic disease self-management programs, you can go to this toolbar here at the top and click on resources and the chronic disease self-management resources drop-down item. Once here, you can scroll through the different resources that are available. That disabilities and living healthy with CDS, living healthy CDSME programs packet, the informational toolkit, is here in this Disabilities and Living Healthy CDSME bullet. And here at the bottom you can see visit the inclusion toolkit to find that resource. You can also find information about offering these programs in federally qualified health centers. You can find information about the Training Academy at the Central Line Area Agency on Aging. And you, we also have some best practices about reaching the African-American faith community and reaching out to the Latino migrant community. Navigating to our resources section and our false prevention resources, you'll find additional resources that are primarily linked to evidence-based false prevention programs. We have a frequently asked questions fact sheet Community-Based Falls Prevention Programs Resource Guide, the North Carolina Special Emphasis Report, 
on falls injuries among older adults is a report that came from the Division of Public Health to provide our agencies with information about falls related statistics. We have a continuum of care toolkit for falls prevention programs. The falls prevention information for older adult caregivers and families. This was that informational packet that was on the slide. A guide for talking to your doctor about falls concerns. There's also embedded into this page a beautiful video that the National Council on Aging did to describe the different evidence-based programs. You can view it here on our website, or you could go to the National Council on Aging's website to view it there. We have a link to the CDC fall prevention page and to the World Health Organization fact sheet on the burden of fall injury worldwide. For some of our program leaders and administrators, we have some trainer resources on our website that include the data forms that are necessary for our programs. We're able to provide our local providers and regional providers with information about the programs that they've offered in their communities. We use much of this paperwork and the, the data that comes from this paperwork to make the case for the programs in North Carolina. We've recently been adding some webinars to our resource center. And in the future, we plan on offering more webinars to highlight some best practices to offering these programs or best practices to referring to these programs. In our North Carolina Organizations tab, you'll find information about the different organizations that we partner with for both the chronic disease self-management programs and the falls prevention program. And then a few of the national organizations are listed in the national organizations tab. Our news feature provides a place where we share the information about upcoming news and information that's in a variety of places. I'll speak a little bit more about this Good News Falls Prevention Grant Award notice that you see here on the, as the first item on the news tab. For groups who have leaders offering the program, there's an opportunity for those leaders to just simply go on our website and add the workshop that they're offering in their community. And you can fill this information out. And adding this information to our website allows us to put the program on the map so that people looking for the programs can find it. In the Leader Info tab, you can also find, informa find information about how to become a leader and what lay leaders are. And at the bottom of this page, there's a, a button that you can click to go to our Lay Leader Training page. Similar to our Programs page, this brings you to a map where current trainings for the programs are being offered. In this case, at this time, you can see that in the Charlotte area, there are some evidence-based program leader trainings coming up. We also have some trainings coming up in the Amatter Balance Program in the Piedmont Triad, so in Kernersville, and the Living Healthy with Chronic Conditions leading lead, Leader Training as well, the, the Chronic Disease Health Management Program. Clicking on these links provides you with the information about when these programs when these trainings are being offered, and who to contact to register to be trained. Lastly, in our Leader Info tab, if you were to click on the leader trainings, instead of going through the how to become a lay leader and having to click on the button to leader trainings, you can reach the leader trainings directly from this taskbar. If you have any questions about our work, or if you are looking for a program that's not available in your community, you can go to the Contact Us taskbar item and put your information in this section, and a message will come to our Healthy Aging NC Info 
at Gmail email account and someone get, will get back to you within a few days. You can go back to the homepage by clicking on Home, or again, if you click on the Healthy Aging NC logo, that also brings you back to our main page. So as promised, I'd like to spend just a couple of minutes before we end the webinar about what we are going to be doing as we move forward with Healthy Aging NC. In August 2017, so just last month, we secured a 2017 Falls Prevention Grant, which is a three-year grant that will allow us to create a Falls Prevention Pathway in Mission Health Partners Case Management System. Mission Health Partners is an accountable care organization covering 18 counties in Western North Carolina. As we work with Mission Health to create a pathway for referrals, we'll be working with the five area agencies on aging, the YMCAs, some of our faith communities, and other partners to simultaneously scale programs, the Falls Prevention Programs, and in particular, A Matter of Balance and Tai Chi for Arthritis, and possibly the YMCA Moving for Better Balance Program in those 18 counties. Over the three years, we'll assess the uptake of classes among those identified at risk and those referred and we'll hopefully be able to assess claims data for patients who enroll in complete classes. We also continue to work on our sustainability efforts to serve as the resource center for evidence-based healthy aging programs in North Carolina. I'd like to leave you with my contact information and links to the healthyagingnc.com resource center page and our email address for Healthy Aging NC as well. And as it says here at the top of the slide, the Healthy Aging NC Resource Center is only as good as the sum of our parts. Your, impact in, your input and feedback is necessary for our long-term mutual success. We are trying to create a very well-informed community and support the providers out there who are offering programs. We recognize that there may be people offering programs or organizations offering programs that may not share their information with us. If you know about programs being offered in your community, please be sure those programs are shared with us so that we can get that information up on the website and help people gain access to those programs if spots are available. We also look forward to working with our clinical and community partners to scale these programs, to embed them into different delivery systems, and to make them available to all older adults in North Carolina. You all are welcome to contact me. My email address and my phone number are on this website, or I'm, I'm sorry, they're on this slide. Um, and I thank you for your time over the course of the past almost hour. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.